Okay, so remember um, I was talking about this simple prisoner's dilemma game. So each player has two actions. So what would the game tree look like if we try to draw it? Well, I'm not going to completely draw a game tree, but the thing is I, we can try and sort of visualize what it looks like. So this static game can be represented as, as this uh, uh, game tree, right? Player one moves first and then player two cannot observe the player one's moves and chooses the actions, either C or D. So the thing is, this is basically what happens in period uh, zero, so the first period, all right? And then once the first period or period zero is over, everybody observes, and there are clearly four possible histories. Is it CC, CD, DC, or DD, right? Four possible. Well, then after this each possible history, once again, player one moves and then player two moves again and they choose C, D. That's it. And obviously same here and same here and same here. Well, as you see, I cannot really go further than this. Well, I mean, we can just for the sake of argument. So here are all C, D, C, D. Well, obviously, if the game repeated only two periods, that would be it and the realized payoffs, right? For example, here the payoff would be, uh, well, remember the history is that in both periods, players play, oh, by the way, this is period one. So what happened in the second period? So, um, so, so here the payoffs, for example, would be two plus two delta for player one, two plus two delta for player two. And here, uh, the uh, payoffs, for example, CC and then CD. So that means in period one, they both get two. In periods two, they get, remember, CD. Player one gets zero, player two gets three. So that means uh, two minus uh, zero times delta for player one. And then for player uh, two, it's going to be two plus uh, three times delta. All right, and so on. Well, let's suppose this is not a two period repeated game, but I don't know, three period. What would happen? Well, that means this is the end of period two. And you know what? Again, player one is going to choose between CD and player two without observing his, his choice is going to choose between C and D. Well, same here, uh, same here. And you see what I mean? So. So the game tree is going to be clearly very complex animal, even in, for example, three period, and even though the game has only two available actions. What matters is, let me just erase these parts and assume that the game will be over in just two periods. Uh, every history defines a proper subgame. So remember the history is basically uh, what happens in each period, so the uh, 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 action profile at each period is going to give us a history. So here, for example, one history, as I said, is CC. So it gives me one proper subgame. Another history is CD, which gives me another proper subgame. Same for DC and DD. So I have four histories in this uh, twice repeated game and four proper subgames. Obviously, the game itself is also a subgame, but remember, we don't call it proper subgame. So this game has four proper subgames. So that's a very important property in repeated games. Every history defines a proper subgame. So what does that mean? That means if we are looking for subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile, it should describe Nash equilibrium strategies at each subgame. All right, so whatever strategy profile you tell me, if it is sp &E, it has to be Nash here, it has to be Nash here, it has to be Nash here and here, and Nash in the entire game, all right? Well, the question is, uh, I mean, let's do it for this simple example. If this game, if, if this stage game is repeated twice, what would be the sp and &E in this game? There's actually a unique sp and &E, which is repeating the Nash equilibrium. Well, here, if you remember, there's only one Nash equilibrium in this game, which is DD, right? So the, uh, the path is one and one. Well, so that means 
If SP and E must tell me a Nash equilibrium at every sub game, well, it should tell me that players are going to play DD here. So the payoff will be 1 1. DD here, because there's no other Nash equilibrium. DD here and DD here. Well, what about the first period? So that means in period one, players must be playing DD, whatever happens in the first period. All right, so the SP and E must, again, SP and E must be such that in period one, players should play DD, whatever happens in the first period. There are four things that could happen in period one, but regardless of those four cases, the DD must be played in the sec a a second period. Well, what about the period zero, the first period? What should they play? Huh. Well, you can figure this out by writing down the payoffs here. All right. Um, but I mean, you should definitely do it at least once. But if you actually, you know, calculate the payoffs one by one, uh, and this game is going to be, uh, you can write this game as a, a normal form. And if you do that, you will actually see that player one and player two should also play DD in the first stage. I mean, I'm not doing it, uh, but you should definitely do it. Uh, in the entire game, there's also a Nash equilibrium where players play DD in the first period. All right. So, uh, well, what does that mean? That means remember in an SP and E, they should be playing DD in the, in the second round or the second period. And so therefore in the SP and E, they should also play, uh, uh, you know, DD here and DD here. All right. Well, we can extend this idea uh, to any game. So here's the results. Any repeated game, all right, whether it's a finite repeated game, uh, finite actions, I mean, or infinite act actions, doesn't matter. Any sequence of stage game Nash equilibrium profiles can be supported as an sp &E outcome. So that means, well, here in this game, there's a, only one Nash equilibrium. So it, basically this result says DD in the first period, DD in the second period. By the way, if this game was 100 periods long, DD in all periods, would give me an sp and &E outcome, all right? We're not defining a complete sp and &E strategy profile. We're just defining an sp and &E outcome. Well, but what if we the, the stage game has more than one Nash equilibrium? Maybe it has two Nash equilibrium. For example, the Battle of the Sexes game has two Nash equilibrium, if you remember. Uh, so here, for example, BB and OO, they both are Nash equilibrium. So then, uh, how many sp and &E's can we have? Well, actually we can have many. One sp and &E is that they play BB in the first period and BB in the second period. So this is one sp and &E. Another sp and &E, they play OO in the first period and OO in the second period. A third sp and &E, they play BB in the first period and OO in the second period, or the other way around, they play OO here and, and BB here. When I say BB here, regardless of what happened in the first period, they play BB or OO. You see what I mean? So, therefore, any sequence of stage game Nash equilibrium profiles is going to be uh, supported as an sp and &E outcome. All right, so the repetition of the Nash equilibrium is in fact SPNE. 